Let's go to Albany, New York, and talk to Ava. What's up, Ava? Hi. What's up? Um, living the dream. <laughs> Anyone who says they're living the dream is like for sure not living the dream. I, I hope you are living the dream. I hope it's I hope your life is dream worthy. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> um, can't complain. Uh, well, my question is You could, but then um, you'd be Kelly, so there you go. All right, go ahead. Um, my question is, uh, what are some considerations when you are putting together a will as far as who will be the guardian of our children? Um, huh. Tell me more. So um, my husband and I have uh, two small kids. They're four and five. And um, we we don't have a will yet. I, I know we needed ah, you know, get one. Get <laughs> one. Or years ago, but, um, today, 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 get one. Okay. Yes. I, I, yeah. Um, but how, how do we pick a guardian? Um, so I always thought my sister would be the guardian of our kids. We're pretty close. Um, but she, you know, now has children of her own. Now she has a newborn and a two year old. And I just, I feel like if anything were to happen to us, you know, I'm going to add my kids who are all close in age too. And, you know, is, is that going to be more of a burden or have you I, asked her? I don't know. I haven't asked her. No, ask her. You're spending a lot of time in your head. This is where a lot of people get stuck because the, the, the thought of their kids waking up, I'm going to get real graphic right now. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'll use my kids cause it'll be easier to metabolize. The thought of my son opening his eyes and getting hit by that dump truck of pain, knowing mom and dad are gone. I cannot wrap my head around that. I don't have yeah. a picture in my head of my, kid, of my daughter getting up and stumbling out of her room into the living room, and we're gone. Or I know, I, I have a picture of what her body posture would be if she walked out a, of a strange room down a strange hallway into a strange kitchen and some other adults were in there, even adults she knows and mom and dad are gone. I know that picture and I hate it and I don't want it in my mind. Right? Yeah. It's easier to not think about, but I know it's something that we have to, you know, yes. Ask and have a plan. And because if you don't, you are just suggesting, not suggesting, you are saying to the state of New York, we would prefer that y'all make this decision, not us. Mm -hmm. And I don't live in New York, but from afar, I wouldn't put a ton of trust in that government at this moment. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, and that's not even just goes for New York. That goes for any state government. So we're faced with, I don't want to imagine this. And so when we don't want to imagine something, we get in everybody else's head around us and we create stories in their heads. And it ends up shutting us down. We end up not moving forward. We don't do anything. So step number one is ask your sister. If that's the person, that's the person. Here's a couple of things I'm going to look for. Number one, um, I want values to be in the, in the, in the neighborhood, right? They might go to this church over this church, but if you want your kids raised with a certain um, faith tradition, that needs to be a part of it, right? Also knowing that their faith tradition may change when they're 15 or 16 or whatever, or the people raising your kids might change just like yours might change. That happens. It's life. You can't predict every variable out, but um, I also want people that I've seen have their own kids and they're doing a pretty good job at it. Like, I like how they raise their kids. I like how they handle conflict. I like how they don't freak out or they don't yell or whatever the thing is. The third thing, um, and uh, this one's this one's tougher, um, and I might be in the minority on this one, and so if people want to make comments, make comments about me, not about you, Ava. Um, but I want people in my local community that my kid, it will minimize the, um, it will minimize the transfer to my kids. What does that mean? Um, my family is all in Texas. My closest friends in the world are all in Texas. Uh, if I lived in Texas, 
And my friends and I, who they're over at my house all of the time, and my family who's around, it would be a no-brainer that my kids would go with one of them. But now I've been in Nashville, Tennessee, for five years. That world is foreign to my kids. They don't know those people like I do. They don't have those long-term relationships. It would be terrifying and tragically uprooting to pick them up from everything they know in terms of sidewalks and schools and grass and weather and drop them in the middle of, y'all just go do life there. And so mm-hmm. we worked really hard to find people in our local community that we felt good, great about. And we asked them and they said, sure. And we probably every 18 months or so, we probably need to be a little bit better about it, but we re-up. Are we still good? Does this still make sense for us, me and my wife? And does this still make sense for them? And if it is, we let them know, here's where our will is. Here's what um, our financial situation will be. And y'all's financial situation will be. And quite honestly, I don't have a ton of crazy restrictions on it. Because if they mm-hmm. take my kid and, and my two kids, they may have to get another house. If they get my two kids, they may have to alter how they live. And if I don't trust them enough with my, with my money, then why in the world would I trust them with my kids? Uh, I guess that was like another part of my question is, um, so yeah, originally I had thought like my sister because we're fairly close, but um, also we all, we have different personal views on on money specifically. Yeah. Um, uh, so we, like me and my husband, we have life insurance in place and um, yeah, my husband brought up like, wow, if we both die, they're going to get like, you know, all this money in life insurance. Like, are they going to be responsible with it? You can put it I in mean, a trust. I mean, no doubt that they will like love my children, but you can put that money in a trust that would be dispersed to your kids at varying ages—16, 18, 25, 30, whatever. Um, and also, there's a trust that would disperse money to your whoever takes your kids. That's just you sitting down with, with a with a tax pro. But Kelly's talking to me. Oh. Hey, sorry. So with sign so language, we've done this recently. Okay. Um, you can also we have someone that takes our children you know, should something happen. And we did the same thing you did, John. Um, it's not our families because our families aren't local mm-hmm. and they don't, you know, so it's, it's a local friend, but also somebody else has financial oversight. Mm. Uh, somebody who I trust implicitly who has the financial oversight. So any, any expenditures and anything from the trust would go through someone else so that the person living with them is not necessarily in it for the money. Yeah, you know, so, so I, I, I know this. I know that I trust the people who I'm going to leave my kids to implicitly. I also know, because of where I work and the work that I do, if you have, I don't know what your life insurance policy is. Let's say it's $2 million. I also know somebody holding a check for $2 million changes them instantly, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe having some sort of oversight um, from a third party who would, would oversee like, well, I I can't give you a million dollars. You don't need a million dollar house now suddenly. Um, or we need to make sure this goes to college education and this goes to the wedding and this goes to a car. So however y'all divide it up is great. However y'all, however y'all break it up and maneuver, that's all well and good, but it's just you and your husband being on the same page and letting them know like, Hey sister, I'd love for you to keep my kids. We love, um, We'd love for you to be the guardian of our kids. Are you still in? I know that you've got two kids. Um, great. Hey, grandparents, we would love for, to put you down as the guardians. Um, and hey, best friends, hey, whoever. And give them permission to say yay or nay. And if they say nay, okay, great. They've got their reasons. It's not personal. Great. I'm so grateful that they gave you boundaries. They didn't just say yes out of obligation. And they're going to have to raise a couple of kids they don't like. So good for them. They said, no, awesome. We're moving on. Or they said, yes, fantastic. Then we're going to have a conversation about here's where the will is. Here is how we would disperse any life insurance money, what that would look like. And like Kelly, we have a third party like uh, like me and my family. Here's a big chunk to y'all. We also have this money in a trust. However that works for you. And the trust has a custodian too who makes sure that that happens. However y'all do it, great. Just let, let, them, let everybody be on the same page as though... You and your husband ran for a quick date tonight to get coffee and y'all were hit by a car. Mm. And I wish that it wasn't that cut and dry. I've just had to tell too many kids that their parents have died. Or I've had to tell too many parents that their kids have died. 
over the course of my career, and it just happens. It just happens. Any tips on, um, it sounds like a very uncomfortable conversation just to bring up like, hey, out of the blue, what are you doing tonight? And uh, will you be the guardian of our children? It's just just that bluntly or any tips on how to like bring it up or? I would say, hey, I need to have a, a hard personal conversation with you. Nothing bad's going on, um, but this is sister to sister. Okay. Or friend to friend. I think <laughs> if, if I'm not mistaken, I think I texted our friends here. And I remember thinking it was the funniest thing. Cause it's like one of the most important decisions of my entire life. And I texted it to them, <laughs> but we were going to get together and we couldn't or whatever. And they're like, what do you want to talk about? And I think and I had made it kind of weird, which my wife says I do all the time on the front end. I think they were asking if we were going to like do, if I, if they were interested in like a wife swap or something. I made it such a huge deal. Like, all right, this is going to be a huge deal. I know it's gonna be kind of weird and y'all don't freak out. And so I think I overdid it on the front end and, but then we couldn't get together for some, something happened and I ended up texting them. And I remember sitting there going, you should be ashamed of yourself. You just texted that. But here's the thing it, it gave them. And it gave them permission to not make a weird face in front of me. It gave them permission to be like, no. And then come around to like, no, this is actually pretty awesome. It gave them permission to do that. So um, maybe if you, if you need to say, hey, I'm going to send you a letter. The letter's going to be weird. Just let me know. And I'll call you in a week after you get this letter. If that's more comfortable for you, cool. There's something about letting people digest it. I don't need an answer right now. Um, maybe an answer in 10 days, in two weeks. But we need to get this ironed out. We haven't done this yet. And it's really important. Um, and go from there. And be prepared. They may not ask you to keep their kids on the back end. That's fine. They've got their reasons. It's all good. Hmm. How's okay. that sound? That sounds good. I mean, it's just, yeah. None of this is fun. If you enjoy this process, you should probably go see somebody. <laughs> right? If you enjoy making plans for how your kids are going to navigate the world when you're dead, if that's fun for you, you listen to a lot of murder podcasts, okay? <laughs> here's, the, here's the last thing I'll throw out there. The temptation is to try to mitigate every variable Here's the hard, hard truth. If two parents if were to die, if me and my wife were to die suddenly and left my seven-year-old little girl and my 13-year-old little boy in the world to make their way, even with the most extraordinary guardian, they've been thrown into the dark sea for a while. And so to think on this side of that level of trauma that I can mitigate every variable and every if then is nonsense. It's a waste of energy. It's me exerting false fake control over a situation that I won't have any control over because I'll be dead. And right. so there is an element of trust to this process. There's an element of I'm going to insure myself to the hilt so that there is no financial concerns when they're in the middle of the ocean trying to tread water. I'm going to make sure they've got men and women around them that love them and are, see the world in their best interest. So when they're in their deep dark sea, and I'm going to make sure that I've got, um, that they know on a daily basis, starting right now, just how loved and strong and capable they are. And really, at the end of the day, I'm going to keep my hands open after that. Hmm, I struggle with that. I'm a uh, type oh. A list maker, checkbook kind of person. and There is yeah, no I list struggle. to be made if mom and dad both go. That's not true. There is a list. It's a, very sh it's a much shorter one than you, th <laughs> than you think it is, <laughs> right? Um, it's a much shorter than one than you think it is. But good for you, like good for you for recognizing it. You've got to, got to, got to get a will. Um, and I'll say this, when I moved to Nashville, I had a really extensive, um, will made up in Texas. I just happened to be colleagues with one of the greatest, uh, wills and trust attorneys on the planet. And, um, so he gave, I mean, it was, it was amazing and it didn't transfer to a new state. So I got with mama bear wills. It's online company. Do we have a discount with them guys? 
Yes, we do. If you go on uh, RamseySolutions.com, use code Dave's Deals okay. at checkout, you get 20% off. Okay. That's what I did. That's what I did for my family to bridge the gap between sitting down and getting a full financial plan and um, not having anything, not having nothing, right? So uh, make sure, make sure, make sure. Even if you go to Mama Bear tonight and just say, okay, we got to get something down in case I die on the way to work tomorrow, which across this country will happen. I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but it will happen. <sighs> I hope to none of the listeners on this show. God, I hope none of the listeners on the show, but... If you have to just go to Mom Bear Wills and put that out there, great. And if you want to get a more extensive trust and a bigger plan, all that kind of stuff, great. Do that. Set up those appointments. Get that stuff knocked out. But you got to get that stuff done, done, done. Protect your kids. Protect your assets. Protect your family. Protect your community for the day. Not if, but when you're gone. Thank you so, so much for this important call, Ava. 